Hi everybody, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf and welcome to Foundation Friday where today we are trying a foundation that has completely blown my mind. Everything about this foundation should not work on my skin. This is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. Now just a bit of background for you if you're new to my channel and hi by the way my name's Gemma I upload one to two videos a week here on YouTube and I'd really love it if you'd press that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos just to get that in right at the very beginning. So just a bit of background for you I have really dry skin. In some areas I have at the moment really dry, very irritated, very sensitive and also flaky skin. So a powder foundation in general would be a huge no-no for me. I also prefer foundations that are more hydrating, more nourishing and have more of a radiant dewy finish. So <laughs> I'm just unsure why this appealed to me in the first place because this is soft matte. It's a powder which generally would make my skin look extremely dry, really dehydrated and um, I mean you should be able to see the dryness from the other side of the street. Anyhow, let's do a little bit of bump on this and we'll get some on my face. So this is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. It's £27 in the UK and you get 9.1 grams of which I have no idea how long that's actually going to last for because I very rarely use powder foundation so I can't really help you out on that other than to say that there was an FB on the top of this foundation pressed in and that is no longer there and I've used this foundation probably six times to really test it out for this review so there are still little bits of the indentation of the FB on the front of here but uh, generally if you picked it up you probably wouldn't be able to see it so I'm not quite sure if that helps you out any but I thought I'd throw it in for good measure. This comes in 50 shades which is extremely diverse. I've gone for the shade 150 which on the website says is for light skin tones with a neutral undertone the Fenty website is one of the best that I've seen for being able to pick your foundation shade online. They have really good descriptions of their products. So all you really need to know is what your skin tone is and what your undertone is and you should be able to pick your foundation shade online. This says it'll give you light to full coverage depending on how you choose to build this up. It'll give you a soft matte finish which is really long wearing. It's supposed to be very light lightweight and a non-caking formula as well as being crease resistant, sweat resistant, humidity resistant and it'll give you no flashback whatsoever so if you're taking lots of photographs of yourself, if you're having some family photographs taken then this should be absolutely fine for all of those things. This is supposed to not settle in any fine lines, any wrinkles or sit in your pores and clog your pores so that's fantastic and and the main thing about this foundation that should be shouted about is the fact that this blurs imperfections and it will blur all of your pores. So if you are bothered about large pores, you may want to try this one. This is also cruelty free. Let's get some on my face. Okay, so we're going to do this foundation Friday slightly differently. I'm only going to apply this foundation to half of my face before I show you this in natural lighting because I think it's really, really important that you get to see this with no other products on side by side with my natural skin just so that you can really see the difference and um, determine on whether you want to give this a try yourself. So. I have gone for the shade 150 which is the same shade that I am in the Fenty Hydrating Foundation. I thought I would start there. It's a pretty good match for me anyway. I already have my concealer on underneath my eyes and also on my eyelids. I find with this foundation if you apply a liquid product after you've applied this powder foundation it looks absolutely fine. It's slightly cumbersome to apply because you're applying it on top of a powder and it tends to go 
a little bit cakier throughout the day and this is not a cakey foundation. So I found that by applying the concealer first, letting that dry down, applying my powder over the top of it, it's a much smoother and easier way of applying. Now you can apply this with a brush if you want to and uh, if you want really light coverage, go for something a little less dense. The more coverage you want, the more dense the bristles need to be on the brush. I'm actually gonna apply this today with the little sponge that comes with the product. And I find that it's a perfectly acceptable method of applying this foundation. And it smells like bike tires, which I really, really like. Am I weird? I am that person that goes into Halfords and sniffs all the tires. <laughs> I could stay in there for days, sorry share too much. Okay, so I'm going to take a small amount of the foundation. I'm hardly pressing on in the pan, just very, very lightly picking up a small amount. And then I have applied all my skincare already. I've allowed that to sink into my skin. So I have a lot of irritation and dryness around this area, which is why I thought this was the perfect day to show you this foundation so that you can really determine how it looks on a dry skin. So I've let my moisturizer sink into my skin, but it's not, you know, smooth to the touch. It is still slightly tacky. So I'm just going to swipe this on. Very, very smooth. And I'm just gonna keep on going into the powder and just applying small amounts in swiping motions. Very, very quick and simple to apply. I'm doing this quite slowly today because I don't want to get it wrong. And uh, I'm not a makeup artist, I'm really not. So I am looking at this from a consumer's point of view, not a professional's point of view. And I don't use a lot of powder foundations. So I'm just building this up as I want it and just really smoothing this out. This does not look like a powder foundation. I can tell you that immediately. I've been wearing this now over the last few days and not one of those days have I thought, oh, that looks quite heavy or that looks quite powdery. It's very, very silky smooth. I mean, I can't really describe it. It doesn't look like it sits on the surface of the skin. It just looks like it melts into the skin and it's a powder. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how that actually works, but it does. So the reason I like this applicator is because it's not round. So all these little pointy bits, if you get a tiny bit of the powder on one of those pointy bits, you can really be quite accurate in the nooks and crannies around your nose. In the nooks and crannies around your nose. So I actually have a lot of severe dryness around this area here because I've recently switched up my tretinoin and it happens. So I've actually got peeling skin around this area which is pretty similar in texture to if you've had too much sun and your skin starts to peel after you've burnt. So you would expect with a powder foundation that the areas of dryness would be emphasized and the areas of dryness the foundation would cling to. And although I have used my Medicaid Ultimate Recovery Cream, which I highly recommend if you suffer with seriously dry skin or any irritated skin, it's absolutely magic. And I have put that on this morning. You definitely don't notice the areas of dryness unless you get really, really up close. So let's look head on because here's one side of my face. I mean, you can see the irritation around here and the dryness here. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I mean, I have no pores on this side of my face. Let me show you this in natural lighting just so you can really see 
how amazing and flawless and airbrushed this side of my face looks while still looking really quite skin-like and definitely not powdery in the slightest. So you can see the difference immediately when you're looking at my face head on. One side of my face looks really irritated and dry, it's got a lot of redness. Yes, it's shinier than the other side because my natural oils are there and you can see my skincare and it doesn't have any mattifying products on. But when we look at the other side, it looks smooth, it looks airbrushed. I have literally no pores whatsoever However, it's covered all of my redness up with very little effort. This took seconds to apply. You can see a little bit of dehydration on my skin. There's not masses of coverage. I would say I'd got medium coverage. I would probably be able to build this up to full coverage if I kept layering this product up, but I don't feel the need. I mean, this has covered everything I wanted it to cover while still looking like skin. It's not clung to any dryness. It's not clung to any tacky skincare that I still had on my skin. I was expecting this to be a little bit patchy in places where it's clung to certain areas and it's not clung to others. I'm just... I'm blown away by this. I am gonna do a wear test on this today, um, but first let me go and put the rest of my products on, finish this side of my face, and I'll come back. Okay, so this is the finished look for today. I've not done too much today because, you know, I'm having a bit of a lazy day. What can we say? I've not even done my hair. It's still just shoved up on the top of my head, which is probably where it will stay for the rest of the day. I'm not lying to you. I'm not going anywhere. So this is slightly too dark for me. If you are my skin shade twin, then I would probably go for the 120. I mean, it's passable, but I have had to bronze my neck just slightly. It is only slightly too dark for me, but there is a noticeable difference. Also, when I've done the right side of my face, there is a little bit more peeling skin on the right side. So I want to show you that up close because I don't want to sugarcoat this foundation. It is not my job to sell this to you. It's my job to give you my opinion and give you the positives plus the negatives as well. So if we zoom in on this side of my face, there is a few flaky bits of skin here, but they're not totally exaggerated with this foundation. Also, if you have a look here, there's some flaky skin here, which hasn't had any of the foundation on whatsoever. This is just the concealer. And also right in the corner of my eye as well, there's quite a bit of dryness and some flakiness there too, which also hasn't had any of the powder foundation on. So I don't think it's the powder foundation that's emphasizing that flaky dry skin. It's definitely only showing up the flaky skin but a liquid foundation would do that as well. It's not sat in any dryness. There is a little bit of dehydration showing around this area, which possibly wouldn't have shown with a really hydrating liquid foundation. But you know, you've got to take the rough with the smooth. I have no pause. I have no pores. So let me just share my thoughts with you on this foundation before I get on with the rest of my day regarding application of other products and how this looks at the moment. So, I mean, everything went on absolutely beautifully. My skin is super, super smooth and silky. It's airbrushed all my pores out. I mean, you can't notice any of my pores, even the pores around my nose area look airbrushed. The rest of my products went on absolutely beautifully, but they did take longer to adhere to the skin. So my blush took maybe 15 seconds longer to show up on my skin than it usually would do because of the powdery finish to the surface of the skin and the smoothness. It just took that little bit longer. I mean, it doesn't bother me. It's 15 seconds at the end of the day and I built it up perfectly. It blended out beautifully. It didn't stick to any areas. It was just a really seamless process. It just took a little bit longer. I don't think this looks overly matte on my skin. It's definitely not a flat matte. It's more of a skin-like soft matte, which definitely doesn't offend me, even though, you know, my preference is more of a radiant dewy finished foundation. 
I really like this at the moment. If you're not really into a soft matte finish, you could always spritz this over with a radiant setting spray just to lift it a little bit. I've chosen to use a little bit of my hourglass blush just to lift the cheek area a little bit whilst missing out this bit because I don't want to cancel out any of the airbrushing effects of this foundation because, you know, no pores. Have I said that already? I look like I have no pores. My skin is completely airbrushed. <laughs> just in case you didn't get that in the first place. So also about the airbrushing capabilities of this foundation, again, if you're not into a soft matte finish, you could always use this foundation just on the areas where you have those large pores to cover those large pores, to airbrush those pores, and just to make them seem a little bit less evident and then use a different foundation over the rest of your face. That is one way that you could actually use this foundation. I wouldn't say that this was a foundation for touch-ups throughout the day. If your natural oils do come through this foundation, I wouldn't apply more foundation on top of it. Even though this is a powder, it comes in a compact, it's a foundation, it's not a setting powder. I don't think there will be any problem with taking a brush and very lightly touching up your skin with this, but I wouldn't want to use the sponge for application purposes while I was out and about, because I just think it would probably look a little bit heavy, which at the moment, it definitely does not look. It looks really lightweight, it feels lightweight, it's really fresh on the skin. My skin, I don't think has ever felt this smooth in my entire life. So yeah, pretty much my thoughts at this stage of the day. Anyway, I'm gonna get on with the rest of my day. I will see you all a little bit later on for a check-in and um, my final thoughts. Welcome back to the check-in. It's now been almost 10 hours since I first applied this foundation to my skin. It's done really, really well really well. Now, there are some natural oils that have come through this foundation, making it not look so soft matte. It looks a little bit glowier, but I mean, not masses. You wouldn't say that this was a glowy finish to my skin now. It just looks slightly more natural to me. I am gonna show you this in natural lighting, but before I do, I just want to explain I haven't added any foundation to this over the top. I haven't added any finishing powder over the top throughout the day. And I have tried not to touch my face, although I have had my glasses on today, so a little bit has lifted from this area here. So let's have a look at it in natural, but not outdoor lighting. Okay, so as you can see, it is slightly shinier, but it still looks really, really flattering on my skin. Zooming in a little bit closer, you'll see the patches on my nose that have slightly disappeared, but again, it doesn't look bad. Right on the tip of my nose and right on the tip of my chin, it's slightly disappeared, but everywhere else is fine. It's not collected in any of my fine lines or wrinkles at all. Even in the corners of my nose, which does look a little bit oily, but it hasn't gone cakey. The only place it looks slightly heavy is in between my brows, and I think that's more of an application issue rather than an actual powder foundation issue. Overall, this foundation, considering I have dry skin, still looks absolutely amazing. So let's talk about the positives and negatives. The first negative is that I've put the wrong shade on my skin. As you can see, this is too dark for me. And as the day's gone on and all the other products have faded on my skin, it's become more evident that I've used the wrong shade. So 120 would be the right shade for me. And I am definitely going to go and buy the right shade. That's how strongly I feel about this foundation. So let's talk about the negatives first. This does emphasize my dehydrated skin. So if if you have seriously dehydrated skin all over your face, I don't think I would recommend this. In fact, I don't think I'd recommend any matte foundation. Something more hydrating and dewy or radiant would look far nicer on a dehydrated skin. But I can definitely put up with these areas looking a little bit dehydrated. They have looked better as the day's gone on. And you have to get really up close to actually notice that dehydration. So I'm being very, very picky. Also, this isn't going to be a great foundation for anybody with super flaky skin all over their face. 
I can cope with it in certain areas and like I said anybody with flaky skin I wouldn't really advise wearing any foundation at all because any foundation is going to emphasize that dryness but a matte foundation is going to emphasize that dryness even more and the last negative is that other powder products on top of this take a little bit longer to apply so let's talk about the positives this is really airbrushing on my skin. This minimizes the look of my pores. It minimizes the look of my texture. It's super long lasting. It's a lovely soft matte finish, which isn't too matte. I think it's more of a natural matte powder foundation. It doesn't look like a powder. It definitely doesn't look dry on my skin. It's really quick to apply. It looks and feels really smooth still. After 10 hours, it really looks and feels super, super smooth on my skin. It's also transfer resistant where my phone is concerned. It definitely passed the transfer resistant test, but I haven't tried it with a white shirt or anything. There's absolutely nothing on that. I don't think I'd want to rub up against my husband in a white shirt. <laughs> that came out wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm not sure I would be comfortable enough giving somebody in a white shirt a hug. Um, but I mean, it passed the phone test for sure. This is really, really easy to blend. It doesn't collect in fine lines or wrinkles. It doesn't sit in pores. It doesn't emphasize or really collect in my dry areas. I really, really like it. I don't have many negative things to say about it, but it's not gonna suit everybody. Now you can use this in lots of different ways. You can use it all over your face like a foundation. You can add this to a liquid foundation over the top to add extra coverage, or you can just pop this over the areas of large pores or texture that you want to airbrush. So, I mean, it's multi-purpose. Would I use this on a daily basis? No. And that might surprise everybody considering that I've been super, super positive all the way through this video. This is a great foundation. I mean, there are very few negatives about this. It's so well thought out. The formula is absolutely fantastic, but we're coming down to personal preference and my personal preference is not a soft matte foundation. It's always going to be a more radiant, dewy, glowy foundation. And for that reason and that reason alone, I wouldn't reach for this on a daily basis, even though it makes my skin look absolutely flawless. But this is an amazing foundation. And if you have dry skin, you shouldn't automatically rule this out. It is definitely worth a try if you have large pores any texture that you want to airbrush out. I would definitely try your best in these circumstances to get a bit of a sample and try this out because I think you'll be surprised. So that's it for this video. It's been a long one considering it's only one foundation, but I really needed to get as much information crammed in this video as physically possible. So I hope you've not just skipped to the end because there was lots of information in the middle that you need to go back and watch now. <laughs> I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've tried this foundation, if you've loved it, if you've hated it, do let everybody know your experience in the comments section because it's absolutely invaluable. All the things that I've said in this video have been from my personal experience. So it's really great when you share yours as well. Hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.